All right, uh, welcome to the video. This is Zach Ireland. I'm talking about real estate investing on Let's Talk Real Estate. This is on YouTube. Uh, if you'd like to watch more content like this, subscribe and go to the link in the description if you want more information on investing in Canadian real estate. And that actually can be from anywhere in the world. If you'd like to take part in this awesome asset class, managed, hands off, uh, then let us know. So I'm looking at a post today on the Bigger Pockets forum. This is a really good uh, source of information. I wouldn't necessarily say it's an education. Uh, if you don't already know, you could, you know, take in a lot of false, uh, false information. But this po uh, post is kind of a launching point for me to start thinking about what I think is coming in the next couple of years. Uh, so let's take a look at the post. So it says mortgage rates in the fours and fives in 2023. And uh, obviously this Kenny Simpson is coming from San Diego, California. So um, he's going to be talking about the Fed in Canada. Obviously, we're talking about uh, the Central Bank of Canada, uh, BOC. So let's talk. Uh, let's read the post. It says the Fed again in Canada, uh, Central Bank of Canada is slowing pace on rate hikes. The consumer is slowing. The economy is headed into a recession. These are all guesses at this point, and some believe this will happen or is happening. If the Fed eases with less rate hikes, I don't know, that's bad grammar. This is That is signaling they need to slow down because the rate hikes are working and inflation is coming down. We have had recent reports that inflation is slowing 9% to 7.7%, and that has already had an effect on long-term rates. The 30-year fixed mortgage, as I type this, sits around 6.125%. Conventional, no points, and VA 5.5, no points. Those rates just weeks ago were 0.5% higher. Do you see VA FHA rates? If you don't know, VA is a Veterans Association, and FHA is the Federal Housing Administration. Rates in the fours and conventional in the mid to low fives is possible by quarter two of next year. If that is the case, we are talking new buyers saving 800 plus a month here in San Diego on entry level homes. Home prices lower, rates lower seems like the perfect storm for a first time home buyer or to pick up your first investment property. A few things that I disagree with here, and obviously um, Kenny seems like he knows a few things. Um, Seems like he knows his stuff uh, to do with mortgages, and I'm I'm not necessarily a mortgage guy. I'm a real estate guy, um, so mortgages, you know, sometimes we ignore them completely, but it's a really important part of the investing process. The first thing that I noticed is that he makes a, a few predictions. One of them is the economy is heading into a recession. Um, we don't know that for sure. I mean, recession, right, is real GDP shrinkage or real P GDP growth below normal um like over one quarter so the problem with that is we've had inflation at seven or nine percent so in order for there to be a recession you just need to have the economy not grow by seven or nine percent uh which never happens seven to nine percent is absolutely astronomical if the economy were to contract uh, one or two percent then i could see that being a recession but if we still have uh, GDP growth in the like you know ra rising a few percentage points, even if it's not real GDP growth, which is um, GDP growth minus inflation of uh, of the CPI, I don't know. I just the economy can still be doing really well and inflation still be uh, quite high. So I I don't see real GDP growth as like it might have been in the past. It might have been a really good metric uh, for how things are growing. To me, it's. It's too broad of a metric to really be useful. Um, a recession is more of a colloquial term for most people. It means people are losing their jobs, um, they're not able to you know, pay their bills, and things are really tight. And while I do think that some people are pretty tight on money right now, um, people are not really losing their jobs. Uh, we still have super, super high employment rates. Uh, that means low unemployment. It means very few people are looking for work. And you've probably heard the anecdotes. If you want work, you can find it right now. You just need to look in the right place. Um, and he does admit that these are predictions. Um, I'm not making any predictions. I'm just saying, as it is right now in November 2022, uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty weak recession. If there was a recession or we're going through one right now, it's really not that big of a deal. It's more based on speculation of what's to come. 
He also says the Fed um, is is lowering their rate hikes, meaning the rate at which the Fed is ra- uh, raising their uh, overnight rates, like their short-term lending, uh, is slowing down. So they're still going up, but they're going down at a slower rate. Why this is con- uh, concerning to me is obviously inflation going from 9% to 7.7%, like that's good. We want that. We want inflation closer to 2%. Or, you know, some people would want it at 0%, right? Um, so while I can I can agree with you, I think that that's good. 1% of 9% is only one-ninth of the problem. Uh, we want inflation closer to 2. So I guess it's, it's closer to one-seventh. You know, you're only one-seventh of the way there, 12% of the way there. Uh, and if we have to keep raising interest rates, the Fed, uh, Bank of Canada keeps raising interest rates seven times more or or for seven times longer uh that's not great and uh i think he might be right in one sense i'm kind of getting into the weeds here but i think uh kenny might be right in one sense that we, we might already be at the the natural rate uh interest rate so that inflation will start decreasing and that means that the fed will will let off and just leave them where they are until the inflation goes back down to two and then, of course, you know, they can start uh, lowering the rate again, letting banks just lend money like crazy uh, and at super low rates. So he mentions a 30-year fixed mortgage. It's pretty unconventional in Canada. Uh, five year is, is or seven years, I think, is the longest uh, that you can fix uh, a mortgage up here. And, that, and that's for your benefit, usually. Um, there's just... It's very rare occasions where a 30-year mortgage is beneficial over seven uh, years fixed and even, you know, a variable rate, absolute. So he says, we've seen recent reports inflation is slowing to 9% and to 7 um, I already went over inflation. Uh, and before, you know, the rate hikes were going up 0.75% or even 1%, uh, one point. Uh, but now they're only looking at 0.5 or 0.25. And that's What he's kind of saying is that the banks are kind of expecting these rates to slow down uh, their rate of increase. So that's why the mortgage rates are dropping. It's not because, uh, you know, the Bank of Canada has lowered interest rates. It's because the bank's forecasts are becoming more positive. They're saying, okay, the pain might not be as bad as we thought because inflation is already coming down. Big banks are looking at the same things that we're looking at. They have the same information and a little bit of bonus. Uh, so you just have to realize that that 30-year fixed mortgage, it's not super useful in Canada, but a five-year fixed or seven-year fixed mortgage is useful for us to look at what the banks think that the the interest rates are going to do soon. And it looks like, you know, he could be right that the rate hike, the rate hikes will be slowing down. Uh, the rates will be going up at a slower rate, and uh, I definitely will, you know, agree with that supposition. I'm not making a prediction, but if I were to look around and, and see what's going on, it seems like unemployment is still very, very low. Uh, jobs are still absolutely everywhere. Uh, money is to be made, you know, it's being made in the economy. It might not be, you know, being made at 7.7% to to outpace that inflation. But it's still, you know, happening at, at quite a good rate. And you do re- do need to realize that energy costs are a large part of everyday life. And gas being uh, expensive as a consequence of, you know, the Russian-Ukrainian conflict, um, you know, is, is a significant uh, portion of that inflation metric because everything downstream, you know, as soon as you say, this is just how it works, you know, even if we don't buy our oil from Russia directly, the fact that Russia is not shipping oil to a bunch of other countries is a problem for us simply because we can't buy the, the oil that they would normally buy from who they normally buy it. They have to buy it from the same person we do. So we're competing for the same stuff. We're going to obviously pay more. And uh, that's that's capitalism, you know, consumerism and capitalism, you know, almost interchangeable. Who's willing to pay the highest price? That's where the resources are going to be allocated. So, you know, just to recap, I uh, have to end the video here. Um, he's he's making a prediction that conventional mortgages will go back into the 5%. Um, and that would mean, you know, he says saving 800 per month on an entry-level home in San Diego. 
it might not be that drastic here because our average home price is lower, but he's right in a way. Um, this this might be. I'm not saying coming up will be the best time to buy an investment property. I'm saying I think right now might be the best time to buy an investment property um, because prices are not super, super competitive. You can pick up a property right now at asking or under asking price. Um, based on the numbers, you could get one with good growth potential. You get one that's in pretty good physical condition. Uh, if the seller feels like they just kind of missed the boat on the multi-offers thing, they might want to get out of the market. Or if they've been in a long time, this is just another year for them. They don't really care. A seller might be willing to unload a property and you can pick it up, like you said, saving a few hundred dollars a month, which means you know you might break even, you might be paying a hundred dollars a month for a while on your variable mortgage until rates do come down. But I do think, and I'm not going to make a firm prediction here, but I do think rates are going to come down. That means your investments will improve. Um, that means if you're looking to get into investment properties, I feel like now is a really, really good time to do that. Not tomorrow, you know, don't wait for next year. If rates go down, you can, your variable rate mortgage will follow them down. If rates go up, prices might fall and prices probably will fall. You pick up another investment property, yours is yours is covered because the cash flow covers, uh, you know, those contingencies. I think people get way too scared, but cash flowing properties cover your downside. That's the beauty about them. That's pretty much it. Uh, I'll remind you again, I'm Zachary Ireland. You can invest in real estate from anywhere in the world. You can invest in one of the best markets in the world. That's Sudbury, Ontario right now. We have property management services. Uh, we take care of everything for you. with buying and selling. That is listing services. If you want to learn more about real estate investing, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.